Hey everybody, I'm Bob from Black Arrow Gaming, and welcome back to the next episode in my fifth Age of Wonders 3 Advanced Strategy series. For the beginning of this series, I want to talk about animators, and how I seem to consistently manage to misuse them. Tarsak is on this, so he's keeping me, uh, he's, he's keeping on it in the comments, letting me know uh, whenever I mess this up, and I appreciate that, I'm not complaining, um, because the whole point of this series is to get better, right? So, a few episodes ago, you guys probably remember that I failed to use a reanimator to inflict despair on uh, an enemy unit, which could have made it easier to convert. Well, in the last episode, uh, when I was fighting this battle over here, uh, getting that Frost Queen, I completely forgot that the reanimator could raise corpse and get my cadaver back. That's how you get cadavers in the first place. You may, you use raise corpse. So um, that cadaver that I kind of just gave up on in this battle could have kept him. Seemed to be struggling with getting gold rank cadavers. So just wanted to throw out that little correction there. There are a couple of other things uh, from the last episode that I want to go over. Um, first off, a couple comments I missed uh, from the previous episode that I wanted to come back to because I think they're still relevant. First off, uh, Tarsak reminded me that I need, to ca I need to remember to cast Embrace Darkness on this giant city before production completes on that first giant. I've got three turns left to do that. I won't be able to do it on this turn, of course, um, but uh, that is something that I wanted to mention. Another thing from uh, Sarah Feingold. So taking the Elf City out here is a good idea. And I talked about that a little bit in the last episode, but I didn't really say why. For one thing, it's geographically in a good forward position, but for another thing, going up against a Frostling Dreadnought, Storm Sisters would be very nice. That being said, I just noticed that city is on fire, which means it's under enemy control. That's not good. That means the enemies are almost right on me. Um, I would assume that's the Frostling, but oh gosh, I'm going to meet the other computers here pretty soon, I think, because they could be coming this way at any moment now. I actually probably, you know what, before I forget, I was going to do something else with these priests thanks to a suggestion from uh, Damon Alexander. He suggested I send them underground to support the uh, armies here, the beetles. Um, well, maybe I could still do that. Ganon's army is going this way. He'll probably challenge whoever's in that elf city. I just don't know how quickly he'll get there. I could at pretty much any time get those haste berries and then get those priests to that city uh, they could they can just get to the edge of it so i think what i will do is actually leave them there for now instead of sending them the other way until i can make sure that giant city is protected um just to be on the safe side but i do plan on reinforcing these armies down here with some priests. I think that's a good idea. Um, what else do we have here? So for this episode, comments from Fira Lich King uh, said that, or I'm sorry, that's Fika, or Fika. I'm not entirely sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, but she pointed out that the Ice Queen's adjacency bonus, uh, Dome of Frost, is another way to lower resistance. I'd forgotten about that. That's a good point. I can use Ice Queens to lower resistance, and as an added bonus, it works against the undead. Can lower their resistance and make them easier to ghoul or not ghoul curse um to control undead basically so uh that is a good point thanks for pointing that out um she also said that uh when i was talking about seeing the edge of the battlefield in the last episode during tactical combat um i'll have to test this i think it's control g but i can't test this without being actually in combat but you can actually pull up the battlefield grid so you can see where the edge is i was talking about that a little bit uh when my cherub was fighting some lost souls uh, Impregnable, Tarsak, and Daniel Nordvall. They actually, I, I gave credit to Tarsak, but a few others pointed out everything that I was saying about the High Elf Reanimator earlier. Um, it was also Impregnable, and Daniel Nordvall pointed out the same thing. So I appreciate you guys catching those mistakes. Honestly, Necromancer is my, probably like my second favorite class behind Druid. And uh, I, it's like I don't know how to use them at all. Like I make so many common mistakes. I still love the class, but I seem to goof up more with the Necromancer units than anything else. Um, okay, what else do we have? Arch Redbeard. Uh, last comment. Yeah, last comment for this episode comes from Arch Redbeard. Uh, basically, requests for items. Um, good ones, too. 
healing items for the sorcerer and the warlord, nourishing meal for probably probably all heroes could use that, but especially I think the uh, necromancer and uh, the life drain sword for the necro and the warlord. Um, I will eventually get to all of that. As you all know, mana is tight, um, and you guys have been on me about getting more mana, being more proactive about getting more mana. Um, I think in this city, so I still want the hospital first because this city needs growth. The sooner I get that dungeon, the sooner it can do basically everything because that's that's 30 production. So I'm going to let the hospital finish, but after that, I'm going to queue up a temple. I was going to do a siege workshop, but getting the temple makes more sense uh, because... Well, it'll be a, a little hit to mana initially because it costs 50 mana to build a temple. It's an investment. But building it first makes sense because it's going to be two turns to build the temple regardless of whether I have the siege workshop or not. So I will do that, then get the siege workshop. Um, then I might get a laboratory and an observatory. It depends on how close the city is to growing uh, and getting that dungeon. I really want that dungeon as soon as possible. can continue digging with this guy. I'm not going to dig out this wall entirely, at least not yet. I want to leave that option for later if I choose to open that up. Uh, but he could go over there, and they're like, there's a bunch of dirt over there. I, he could dig this all out back here. In fact, that's probably what I'll do with him. This guy's just going to be a gold generator for now, I think. Uh, Halfling Army's got a battle they can do here. I suppose I'll go ahead and get that done now. Uh, we'll probably want to move onto the tile with the hero so she can pick up the items. And it's a very likely victory. So, my units are pretty beat up. Um, she may need to cast... Well, she can't cast Harmonizing Energy. Nuts. Forgot about that, because I'm low on mana. Uh, let's see here. I, I do want a buff. She can still... She can still do, um, uh, Star Blades just fine, so I'll probably do that. I want him in front. I want this guy kind of in back. Out of range of that beetle, preferably. Right there should be fine. I'm going to put her back behind everybody. And I want the knight... Probably have the knight out here supporting the ice queen so she's not by herself. And in a position to charge in if he needs to. And then I think have the shock trooper actually i think the shock trooper is okay where he is now i'm gonna cast star blades on him still trying to crank out that xp for her as fast as i can oh that's unfortunate hope i didn't use up all my good luck in the last episode all right well the good news is that i have a very angry orc impaler right here who can probably trash that beetle um, the knight is better off if he's devastating charging something, so what I'm going to do, she doesn't have, okay, she does have the ability to freeze, and she's got a ton of health. I'm going to use her, to try to lower this guy's movement a little bit, maybe freeze him. I got a little lucky, I got the freeze, and I got lucky. Um, she's going to get flanked by him, but she's got so much health it doesn't really matter. The, this knight can take out that big beetle. And the shock trooper... Well, here's what I can do since that beetle's frozen anyway. I can flank this guy to turn him around. The shock trooper can war cry and just crush that beetle. As long as it doesn't get too lucky. Oh my gosh. Okay, well... Uh, can anything kill him? I'm gonna have to take out that untouchable. The big beetle can't move. I've got a pretty good stand chance to stun that. I think I'll take that. Okay, Whew. thought I was not gonna get it. Alright, I want that orc to have as much health left as he can, so please kill it. Thank you. Okay, that guy needs health. That's a job for the Ice Queen, I think. Turn those guys around, please. 
All right. The Paler should be able to kill him, which allows the Ice Queen to heal this guy. Let the Knight build up Devastating Charge. He should be able to finish the Butcher. Oh, right, and then that guy's left. Okay. Uh, we're gonna let her get the kill with the crossbow. Not with shock bolts. For more XP. Okay. Uh, pfft, this gemstone is crap. Urban concealment's practically useless. That shield's kind of nice. But I think I've got better shields overall. This is another one. I need to check people's items before I launch these battles. Part of me wants to just sell this for the extra gold since my my supply is getting lowered. But I think the last time I passed up on a shield, I actually realized after the fact that I could use it. That's a lot of gold, though. I kind of think that I'm going to go ahead and take this. I may sell that. No, that gemstone's just complete garbage. I'm gonna sell this for gold. I keep forgetting if people have shields. Okay, people do have shields. Okay, so I don't feel too bad about that. Yeah, that was worth it for the money, I think. Gotta keep funding my war habit somehow. All right, next up on the list is that quarry, but they can't quite reach it, so that's fine. Uh, oh, a much needed pile of mana. I forgot this was over here. So I can grab that. Does it let me do anything cool with it now that I have it? Uh, there's so many things I need to do with mana. Terraforming, item creation. I know that's not enough to make an item. It might be enough to do some more terraforming. Let's uh, explore with the cherub a bit more. See what else I can find. I'll probably send him... I'm gonna send him straight east underground. Oh, another enemy. They have not seen me yet, though. Wait, maybe they did. They have eagles. Uh, that might have been it. Alley Thistlewood. Those guys probably did see me. I think they have extra vision range. Oh, wait. No, they don't have night vision. If they move this way, they'll see me. I can't retreat, unfortunately. But they don't have night vision, so they can't see quite as far underground. So I may have one more turn before all the computers meet me, unless they don't move this way. All right. Let's get her down here, ready for the next battle. All right, Carson's Manticore arrived. That's always a nice sight to see. Um, and that should be it for this turn. So let's go to the next one. Hopefully I'm not forgetting anything. So I'm most interested in seeing, I think, what she does down here. They might, they might go try to clear that farm. Is that an army my sorcerer could handle? With Chaos Rift, maybe, although casting any spell in tactical combat against a computer can be somewhat risky. Um, crap. Now they've seen, now everyone's met me. All right, now everything changes. Ooh. Well, I don't have, I have a couple global spells up. Now mana becomes exponentially more important. Man, I was hoping they would move away so I could hide for a couple more turns. Well, this changes scouting, though. Now at this point, it's all out scouting. Plus, I can check and see who I'm up against so you guys can give advice on good ways to fight them. Oh, I know one of those is a guy I made. It's a Draconian Sorcerer. It is a pretty good combination of stuff, in my opinion, anyway, but I'm biased, so. Well, I think the Sorcerer army may have to under hang out underground 
Unless I can really fast go up and clear that ziggurat and get back down here. I may want to research advanced logistics as soon as I can. Because moving units around quickly is about to become a lot more important. Oh, hey, hey, hey. We're... Okay, he didn't make it. Probable victory. Let's do this and get another bone dragon. Should be fine. Alright, let's get everyone gathered together. And some much needed healing on that dragon, I think. Need our dragon in tip top shape. That heals 25 to undead, right? Is there anyone who could use it more than the dragon? It does not seem to be the case. Both my ghoul animals are still extremely weak. Uh, let's see here. What can I do? I'm gonna want that Ice Queen up here because I'm probably gonna want to try to. I'm gonna try to control undead on. Well, I wouldn't want to do it on the Bone Collectors because for whatever weird reason they have spirit protection. So I might try controlling undead on the. No, wait. I don't think it will work on the dragon either, because he's got mind control immunity. In fact, I think the only thing I could potentially get is the Banshee, so I guess that's what I will have to try. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use healing on the dragon, patch him up the rest of the way, I guess. Aha! Alright, what can I do? Setting him on fire would also make him... Well, uh, no, again, it doesn't matter, because I can't... Yeah, I can't do that. Target cannot be affected. What's the odds on the Banshee? 42? I'll worry about that later. First off, I would like to kill that dragon. If it's... I think I'm going to back up and see if it's dumb enough to fly into my units. I'd rather fight it over here where I have some cover than out in the midst of the open with bone collectors surrounding me. Because bone collectors can be kind of hard to kill, especially for an army like this that doesn't have a whole lot of elemental damage that undead are weak to. About the best chance I've got is those raptors, and they charge, so I'm going to want them on the flanks. Somebody else needs to take the hit from that dragon, and I think the Ice Queen might be the one to do it. Let's get you behind. For a second, I got mixed up and thought this was the enemy Bone Dragon and I had a panic attack. <laughs> I'd be happy with it going after either the Ice Queen or my Dragon. Either way, it would be cool. Alright, guys. Let's see what happens. Oh, whoa, not my snakes. Yeah, there we go. Almost forgot about them over there. Banshee can phase and that's... Probably what she'll do. Sweet. All right. Good start for me. All right. First priority, get new dragon. Second priority, try not to lose any other little units. Killing it as quickly as possible is probably the way to go. I need that Banshee out of the face of the Orc Priest. It's, the Priest can do probably more damage than anything else. Um, is it worth trying to control undead on the Banshee? Probably not. It's not really in a convenient place for Farron the Wicked to go after it. I think I'd rather have Farron supporting the other troops. Let's see, what can kill that Banshee? Well, a Black Knight might do the trick. They got a lot of physical protection. Snake would do decent damage, but I'm not willing to expose it to that damage. Maybe Control Undead is the best option in this situation. I just don't know how I'd get to him. He doesn't have any phase or teleport abilities, as far as I know. I'd have to move that raptor. The raptor might be a good choice at trying to kill that thing, but the raptor's already a little damaged. And this Ice Queen's a lot weaker than my other one. 
You know, this is actually going to be a little harder than I anticipated, I think. I could always just go after it with the dragon. He's got way more health. And leave me open to the other dragon. I think I want him using up that dragon. That dragon can fly, so it could become more of a problem. I can't freeze it. Alright, I think I just need to flank it. The Black Knight should be okay. That's not good. Wanted to move him back to get a couple hits with Priest. Okay, the Luckies are not helping. What if I meleeed it? It kind of goes both ways, but it would use up the rest of its action points. Okay, he killed it just fine. Alright, now is the Black Knight in danger? Uh... Maybe if he gets flanked a few times, possibly. I may need to try to lower the movement points of one of those things if there's a way I can do that. The Ice Queen's just not tanking enough to do it. I could send the spider out. But without support, it'll kill the spider. I may need to just do a little math here. I might have to just eat up action points and spread the damage out among everybody while trying to avoid the dragon hitting anything. I could also go after the dragon to lower his movement a little bit. This is not quite as easy as I had hoped. He could potentially... No, he won't... He won't kill that raptor, but he could come darn close. What if I did this? If I sent her after that, it would hit me at most twice. How much movement does he have? Okay, so what I think I'm going to do is send everybody out on the offensive. Try to lower these things' movement. Maybe get a lucky web with the spider. I don't know, we'll see. Spider has not a good movement angle, hang on. Okay, so it can get up to there, which I think is where I would prefer to have it. I'm gonna try to web first. Okay, that failed, which is kind of what I was expecting. He's out of movement. Um, the Necro could take one of these. This is where I'm wishing I had the, the Necromantic Aura. But he could, well, he couldn't maybe kill it, but he could at least lower movement points pretty effectively, I think. but that leaves him in range of the dragon. Ah. Hope I didn't get my, I hope I didn't just get my necro killed. I may have to sacrifice. I was hoping to keep these guys alive long enough for the Lich King castle battle. That may not work out. See, I'm worried about the dragon turning around. I may need somebody to just go poke the dragon. What kind of health do you have? That thing, well, maybe I'll get lucky. Nope. One more hit and that raptor's gone. It's maybe unlikely that this guy would move. I don't know. Farron's not going to die as long as he stays there on defense. He'll be fine. It, the question is, what will this Bone Collector do? 
And all I've got left are the Shock Serpent and the Ice Queen. I could Ice Nova, but I don't think that really helps me much here. I think eating up action points is probably the way to go. This Snake could prevent... The Snake could prevent this Bone Collector from doing anything. I think I'm going to do that. Okay, so that Bone Collector can't move. So now it's just the dragon I gotta worry about, who may take the opportunity to go kill that raptor, I don't know. How far can she move? Not quite far enough. I wish that I wish that dragon was turned a little bit. Well, maybe, no, it wouldn't matter either. Um... I was thinking about having it intentionally hit her, but it would do too much damage and I would risk losing her. And she's more valuable than the raptor in the long run, I think. It's possible he might just bite the dragon too, I don't know. What I think I'm gonna do is try to move... I'll move here... to punish that dragon more if it tries to go after the draconian raptor. Actually, what I could do is move here to punish both the dragon and that bone collector if it tries to go after the raptor. I think I'm going to lose the raptor, though. Yeah, alright, he wanted that raptor dead. Well, the good news is that lesser reanimate undead will still work. Um... The bad news is I gotta figure out a way to keep one of these dang bone collectors alive for a little longer. Or kill the dragon fast and reanimate it. The reanimator does not have lesser reanimate undead. Is a raised corpse. Which, this might be a situation I want to use it in. I might have to give up on that raptor and just get a cadaver back on the battlefield to use up an action point. Because it would put it in a good spot. Uh, boy. Okay, I need to kill that dragon. How can I do that effectively? And I also would like to save that raptor if that's at all possible. Those bone collectors are just too dang tough. Too dang tough. What's the fail on this? It just does a little bit. Nah, it's not good enough. Only five to seven spirit damage if I try to control undead. The spider can handle one hit. I wish he had just a little bit more action points. So I'm not sure if I can get the spider away from the bone collector. I could turn the bone collector around, run both of those guys away, and let Farron and the Wicked handle that. But that leaves him unable to help out down here. One thing's for sure, I think this priest needs to hit that dragon, preferably with a flank attack. What can the reanimator do? How? The problem is that these guys do so much physical damage. So it limits my options quite a bit. The Black Knight still has a lot of health. And that guy's guard is down. So, actually, I might be able to kill that that guy. If I don't want to raise the... Well, hang on, let's see here. I could use Farron to reanimate the cadaver. Have the cadaver, then send this guy around the back. Get a flank attack, have the cadaver get another flank attack. Or no, it would be a, a raptor. Have the raptor get another flank attack. I still need to do something about this bone collector, but I think that the reanimator can actually take a couple hits to slow him down. Let's see if I can, how much damage. I'm not gonna do nearly enough damage to that bone dragon. I'm probably gonna have to rely on my dragon tanking hits from it for another turn. 
And the other tough part is I gotta leave a reanimator alive until I can manage to kill the dragon. Okay, he's not gonna kill the Ice Queen, so she could actually... Alright, I think I've got a plan. Use up some more action points. And damage that thing as much as... <sighs> the luckies are not helping. Not in this battle. Okay, well that didn't go as well as I had hoped. If I want that raptor to survive, Farron has to go out there. So I need to see if I can handle the rest of this by myself with just these units. Black Knights have Guard Breaker, which would allow the Frost Queen to move as I need to. Or I could just use up its action points. I don't really want to risk the reanimator. Okay. I'm gonna go with this plan. I want this thing dead. The snake can finish it. Yes, the snake can finish it. All right, you've got a little bit more health. Got a little, she's got a little bit more health than the reanimator does. So probably rather have her take more hits. The problem is the dragon can bite her in the back. But it'll do 14 to 22 damage. That thing will do at most 17, so that's 34. That's 61, that's, that'd be 30. That would leave me with 31 damage, I think. Yeah, 31. I don't think she'll die. Yes, she should be fine. This reanimator can soak up one more hit, which leaves him unable to move. That may allow Farron enough time. Yeah, I don't think that dragon can kill anybody. This may allow Farron enough time to go over here and save these people. Which I'm going to want to make sure I build up and get a charge attack because I may as well. Um, I wonder if I could actually kill this thing here and now. If I bite it with the spider, then circle around and get a charge attack with the bone collector. Oh yeah, I could kill this thing. Hang on. So if I move the spider once to where it can only hit twice... Well, okay, I might be able to kill this. I just have to bank on not having them get lucky anymore. There's only so much you can do with lucky. Okay, I got it. But now that one has to stay alive. At least until I get that other bone dragon up. Oh, and a little exposure. That's nice. Okay, so the dragon went for the Ice Queen. That's not necessarily surprising. That turns him around, that's good. That means the priest can probably kill him. All right, good, good, good. Now, here's the thing. I can move in with Farron. In fact, I think that's the, the right play. Get the bone dragon back as soon as possible. What, who's that other dead undead there? Oh, that's just the Banshee, okay. So I want reanimate undead on the bone dragon. So the bone dragon is mine, so I don't have to worry about that. Um, now what I need to do is try to soak up this thing's movement long enough for me to reanimate my raptor with lesser reanimate undead. Which I should be able to do just fine. In fact, I can get the snake a little bit of extra XP here. What I can do is I can... The raptor's right there, so I'm going to need to move the knight. I can actually soak up an action point by simply doing that. <laughs> I can soak up another action point by a single bite from the snake, which will give this, also give the snake a decent bit, bit of XP. Oh, no, that was a flank. Crap. Um, 
So he's still got two movement left. The Black Knight, I'm actually afraid of killing it at this point. Well, I've got... No, wait, I've got my other dragon. He could handle a flank attack from that thing. He's still got 39 health, so he'll be fine. And then I can use the reanimator, but the reanimator needs to not be on that spot. I can run him around the back. That should work. Okay, she needs to get out of there before she freezes anybody. Uh, okay, he's out of action points. That bone dragon can chill. Those guys can chill, they did a good job. And he can chill, and he can chill. And it's just that raptor. Okay. Now, lesser reanimate undead to get my raptor back. Uh, man, these guys are going to need so much healing when this is done. Um, I could probably raise a cadaver. Don't know if it's worth it, though. Actually, you know what? I don't want to do that because there are so many units in this stack that need healing right now. I don't want the cadaver soaking that up. So I think I'm just going to kill the bone collector now. Um, I would like to do that with the spider, if I can pull it up. Did the spider level up this battle? Mm, well, the spider can't reach anyway, and I'm not going to spend the time trying to... I, I don't want to spend another turn on this thing. Uh, what about the shock serpent? I could maybe get it a little bit more XP. That will most likely kill it. That will most likely kill it. Alright. What if he gets lucky? Then I lose my snake, I think. No, the snake can take one hit. Okay. Well, that was a lengthy battle. I apologize for taking up a big chunk of the episode with that one, but that required some careful thought on my part. But the good news is that I was successful and didn't lose anyone. Uh, the bad news is that there's a bunch of angry people that just met me. So let's take a look at the new contestants. There's Dova the Keen, who is a draconian sorcerer that I made. You guys might remember him from my, uh, my second advanced strategy series way back in the day. Um, let's take a look at this guy's stuff. He's got two fire magic and one shadowborn adept. Which is a decent combination for these guys, I think, in my opinion. I like the fire magic because it helps with their climate and everything. They really like temperate, which fits well with them. And fire magic's just kind of fun. But Shadowborn I got because I really like that on... I really like having lifesteal, uh, especially on Phantasm Warriors. For kind of tanky as it is, as long as they don't run into certain elements. So yeah, there's that guy. These guys, I'm not sure, sure about. Okay, we got a second Dreadnought. This one's a Draconian. That means I have to deal with both Frost and Fire Dreadnought units. Uh, both of them are good oriented. The Frostling was a Keeper of the Peace. This guy is Creation, Adept, and Master. Also has Adept of Air. And the final one looks like a Necromancer. That's a Dwarf Necromancer. Uh... Let's see, one earth, one fire, one destruction. I fought against him in an off-camera game with Evan recently, but we kind of we kind of squished him. But he's got a lot more backup now than I had back, or than uh, I mean, in our series, he didn't have quite as many friends helping him out. Well, actually, that's not true. But I had Evan helping me, so might be a little bit harder without his help. I would love to go after that and take that out. Uh, that army is so dang beat up. I don't know if they can handle that. I feel like they might need to chill here and, and re regenerate health for a little while, but I don't really feel like they have time to do that. I don't have enough healers. I don't have enough reanimators. Do any of these guys get... 
Undead healing? No, they don't. I would need another reanimator. The well down there restores health, but I think by the time I run down there, I'll probably have mostly healed. I can do some in-battle healing, though. And at least here I wouldn't have to worry about a bone dragon. Uh, let's look at the kind of damage these things do. Physical and poison. A lot of poison. The bone collector is the main threat there. What I'm trying to decide is whether I could do another battle and maybe try to use it as an opportunity to heal some units and maybe even evolve that snake. In fact, I would almost most definitely evolve that snake, which would be useful in the Castle of the Lich King. I think what I'm going to do is just take one turn, chill a little bit, um, and heal. I'm going to need uh, probably one healer for each army, so I'm going to temporarily put the reanimator over here. Stick these units right here. The Ice Queen go here. Wedge a little closer to that and call it a turn there. Um, it's not going to make much of a difference, but just having a little bit more health before I go into that next battle would make me feel better. Alright, so that whole situation took forever. Um, so let's move on to something else. So all the computers have met me, which basically means scouting is extremely important now. Um, I probably want to get Seed of Distrust on this city as soon as I can. Uh, it doesn't matter for this one since it's apparently already under enemy control. So let's summon a Cherub over here and go running out there to get that done as, as fast as I can. Can he reach? No, he just barely can't reach. Oh, he's one turn away. All right, that's okay. We'll get there. Now that the cherub's been summoned, I should probably cast Embrace Darkness on that giant city before I forget. I mean, he's got two turns left. Problem is I can't defend it, and if anything rushes it... Well, I could. Okay, Ganon's army's got his martyr already. I forgot I already got that out there. Uh, what's the fastest way for him to book it down to where the elves are? Looks like it's going to be down through here, so follow the road, I suppose. And I'll keep these guys on standby, except for that martyr, he's got things to do. Um, this one I think I will start working his way up towards Karzin, probably. Um, Karzin's going to come down here, but then I think he's going to go east across the river. To no, he's got to go up He's got to go up there. What a weird route. Wants me to go because it wants me to follow the road. <sighs> Crap. I forgot. Ganon's army was going to go after that Tigran city. The Necromancer will have to pick it up later. I forgot. And he was like right there. But it might be better to have him go down here anyway since I know there's an enemy army down here that I'm going to need to deal with. Uh, Alright. You know what? This guy... Yeah, Carson's a long way away. I'm going to have him start working his way over there, and I'll probably have him go through this area here. It's a little risky with the Tigran city right there, but I still think it'd be faster than going around backwards. It's just it really wants me to use that road. I'm going to have to take a different path. All right, two more of those guys to make. Can the halfling army? Yes, I think they can. Should be able to reach here, take a step onto this, and then double back and still make it. Yeah, yeah, I should be fine. Let's get this over with. We got some not so happy halflings to take care of. All right, the eagles are coming, as Gandalf would say. So. Let them eat orc pikes, as Gandalf would definitely not say. I keep forgetting this Ice Queen's so much more powerful than my other one, so she can actually uh, be a frontliner for this. Leave all the tough heavy hitters up front. See what happens. I don't 
Well, I do need to cast spells just for the sake of... I, I need my mana, but I also need XP for her. She's 845 out of 900. Yeah, let's, let's, let's do some magic. Just some cheap magic. Okay, well, you've made the mistake of leaving yourself open to an orc pikeman, which is not going to end well for you. Um, I want her to... I would like her... I want the halfling to get the kill on that eagle rider, if I can pull that off. Two, three. Knight would almost certainly massacre that thing unless it got lucky. That's a problem. Lucky makes everything unpredictable. Don't like it. <laughs> Let's just get him out of here. Everybody else is slow enough that it doesn't really matter. Uh. Well. I think what I'm gonna do is... Okay, I think I know what I'm gonna do. Move her back here for safety. Harmonizing energy, the orc. Let the orc do this. And I want him to go get in that jester's face and prevent it from doing anything mean. And I think he's strong enough to take... Okay, definitely. A couple hits, because I got lucky. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Lucky again, all right. It comes and it goes. Well, and there it goes. Um, all right, he's good though, he's good now. The Ice Queen can come through. I'm gonna leave her here so she doesn't chill the orc. She's gonna hit to heal the flyer. But everybody else should be good. All right, so. Gonna need you guys to turn around, I'm afraid. No lucky for them. Move her slightly. Move her down here to heal. And I want that knight to get, I think, one critical hit on that eagle rider. All right, perfect. Then I can finish it off. Thought it was going to get lucky. She's still not quite to the next level, though. Maybe this next battle here will get it. Let's see what we got here, though. Stock of Living Vines, Entangling Touch, not bad. Inflict Dazzled, maybe even better. I think I'll take those items. Um, I do like having Inflict Chilling on her. But Inflict Dazzled is, is always a nice addition. Inflict Dazzled. Yep, Mesmerizing Necklace. Dazzling units cannot retaliate or make any attacks of opportunity. Since, since she's primarily a ranged and, and spellcaster, um, that's actually kind of nice. Although sometimes I actually want to get rid of action points, so I'd prefer enemies hit me. Uh, the Necromancer doesn't have any sort of sword or anything, so I guess I'll send this over to him. And then I can have these guys go back and take out this little surprise over here. Oh man, reanimators. I could really use them elsewhere. But sadly, this army cannot get them. Alright, well... I guess you guys are just gonna have to- oh wait, hold on a second. There's a lost city here. If she gets Chaos Rift in this battle, they could maybe go see what's in there and possibly clear it. I almost feel like they need to go after that Lich King cat or not that Lich King Castle, the Necro Circle, though. I don't know if they can leave this city down here unguarded. Was I sending? An orc down this way? Not yet. I think this guy could go that way. 
Actually, I think he probably was. It's not going to be enough to hold off another group of lost souls and stuff, though. But I do want a little more backup underground. As for you, he's going here. I'll grab those haste berries. Which allows me to send... Could he make it there in one turn if there was an emergency? Is that a one? Yeah, it's a one. Oops. Okay, so that makes me feel more comfortable about sending my priest out to go underground and hang out with the beetles. Sorry, I got completely sidetracked here. Uh, back to this. I'm going to attack with a... Uh, probably with the, the knight, whoever's got most movement. Only a probable victory. Oh, it's the friggin' lost souls. The game overestimates them constantly. All right, uh, why don't you guys... Do I want to charge or hold back? I'm gonna say hold back for a minute, long enough for her to maybe cast another spell. Harmonizing energy is a good one. It gives her quite a bit of XP. Whoops, that's okay. I didn't see that fence there. Uh, all right. Um, why don't you go here to sort of block their view? Go here. And the orc can cower in the back with his low resistance. Ah, uh, they want that frost damage on the draconian. I see how it is. Try to stun one of those, or could kill a lost soul. Let's uh, let's go for the kill. Just get one dead. I could absorb quite a bit of movement from these guys. Despair is the only problem. Uh, wait, does that knight have strong will? It does. It cannot be despaired. Very well. Why don't you just absorb action points? leave more for the... I really want the, the my sorcerer to level in this battle. So I'll get rid of the lost souls, but just keep using the knight to to get use up all their action points. I'll actually have the flyer do the same. He could get despaired, but that's okay. He should take hits from both of them there, I believe. Yep. All right. I'm going to trust the Orc Shock Trooper to handle a lost soul. Well, he can't by himself, but... Alright. So these other two remaining are both tier 2 units. I got the stun on that. Maybe I should have stunned it first before doing that. Uh, Alright. Ice Queen, do your thing. It's gonna be a little chilly for the human knight, but that's okay. And I want the shock trooper to stand there. I don't really want these things coming back. Well, except for that one. He can come back. Nice, there's her level. All right, she got it. That's what I needed. I'll probably still let her get a little extra XP, though, because she could use stuff like Thunderstorm, so I may as well do this. Is it worth using more mana? I don't know. Maybe not at this point. 
I got level 13, so I think I'm just gonna try to get the kill with her. I'm cool with that. Okay, so Chaos Rift is mine. Let's get that now. She's got it. She's got enough magic to cast it. Which means I might be able to clear that lost city. Which would be pretty darn nice. Unfortunately, it doesn't give mana, but it gives a lot of other stuff, so. And it's not a guarantee I'd be able to clear it, because I don't know for sure what's in there. But it significantly improves my chances, so. I think her army could probably handle it. I think it's worth at least checking it out. So we'll go there on the next turn. Uh, skill to research Blight Empire. Um, I don't know if I... You know what? I want logistics. And I want storm magic. I never did finish storm magic. Uh, which one of those is more important? You know, I kind of want storm magic because that could give me an option in some combat with the computer. Because the AI can't disjunct instant damage spells. So... I don't have to worry about them getting a critical disjunct or something like that. Um, and having smite with storm magic is just really, really powerful. So I want to have that. Oh, and I need that for the Lich Castle. In fact, I could use that for all of the undead I'm fighting down here. I'm hoping they don't spawn anything else too quickly. All right, Kenton has, well, it has all the magic of buildings. I could get it. I could. I guess it's time to just upgrade it to a Grand Palace and then let it do something else. Probably generate gold or mana. Shooting Star still has two turns left. Feels like that's been up for an eternity. But these last few episodes, I really haven't made it very far. All right. Um, the Builder's Hall is done. Let's get that shrine. Uh, that's probably more needed than anything else. And I'll probably just build the shrine and the temple. I really need magic. Draconians are unhappy. They will get over it. Alignment change to evil. And continuing to produce orc priests constantly forever. Oh, hey, they uh, united and produced the... Okay, so they got the observatory in one turn. Cool. Neat. And the master's guild. Right, because I had him queued. That's what our Tread Reader was talking about when he kept reminding me to queue up stuff in cities. Speaking of which, I should probably queue something else after this. Oh wait, I can't, because the Grand Palace comes next. I can always cancel it if I remember to do that. I don't know if I'll remember to do that. Uh, there's not really anything else I want in that city. Like, maybe a wooden wall? Uh, the arena gives a little bit of gold and happiness. I guess I would get the arena, probably. Let's queue that up, and then if I remember, I can cancel it and get a gold palace. If I don't, I get an arena. It doesn't hurt. And this one... I'll queue up a siege workshop, but I'll probably try to remember to switch it to a temple. Alright, but I got this city up and running now. That's good. I don't think it's... Uh, I think I already looked, and it's not in danger of being attacked by anything. Yeah, that's too far away. Uh, let's see here. Well, I can build a temple right off the bat. That's probably what I'll do. I need that city to grow as well. It'll get some mana from... Well, actually, the biggest bo boon to myself, I guess, is this destruction node right here. That 15 mana I'm getting from that. That helps tremendously. But the extra gold and research would be very welcome. Uh, that is... And it is now Goblin, so... Yeah, that's right, because I just got finished migrating it. Did I ever decide where I was going to build my next Settler? Okay, yeah, I am building it here, so, so that's fine. Um, these guys are going to probably chill for a little bit. I'm not going to send them too far or do anything crazy with them, unless I can spot some... You know what, what I'll do is I'll send that Flyer out here, because he could look around... Or they could go deal with those bandits. I think I might send them off to deal with those bandits, actually. That seems like a good idea. Maybe I could get them real quick and then come back to defend the city, but 
since I didn't see anything. Oh, hey, bandits. Uh, wow, I wish I would have. Well, okay, these guys have enough movement. Let's take care of those before they risk the city. What's up, guys? Three tier threes versus three tier ones. We'll see how this goes. Well, that's good. They'll probably all sprint. Just to be as big of a nuisance as they possibly can. Well, it's not going to matter because I'm going to get haste berries. Or not haste berries, bountiful melons or whatever they are. They heal me. Alright, we gotta just finish these units off, guys. Come on. Oh, you're tanky. Yeah, I can do this. Everybody gets heals. Yeah, we're not going to have them sniping my city. That's not allowed. Uh, I think, given the circumstances, probably need to generate more mana. Also, I'm going to need to research more casting points soon, too. I've been sort of holding off on that because I didn't have enough mana to really utilize them. But All right, well, now I think I want to send this cherub... Should I send him straight through the middle of the map? I mean, I know there's a Frostling there. They're going to have White Witches and stuff that might be able to get me on the water. Maybe I should go north? I don't know. No, let's just, let's just go for it. We'll go Gutsy and go straight up the middle. Let's try to discover as much as I can with them as quickly as I can. Uh, I still need to build my fort here. Which is probably going to go there. Which means Karzin needs... That mine has been explored. Okay, that's good. Karzin needs to just finish this mine off. I really slowed all those units down. But I guess not everyone can fly on a manticore. Uh, I'm going to manual this one. There's a lot of spiders that can do a lot of webbing. And if you get unlucky, that can go wrong really fast. Alright. Karzin is going to use Touch by Faith on, I think, the Impaler. These guys are going to start cursing spiders. That's not allowed. Let's do this. Sprint around behind this guy. I'd hoped he could move a little further, but that's okay. War cry. Flank him this guy to kill that spider and then use the priest to kill that one okay that takes care of that Karzin can probably handle a good chunk of the rest of this yeah go for it dude you're tanky enough I wouldn't mind giving him some more health though you nuisances knock it off oh the poor boar is scared well who needs healing actually uh Carson does i guess i just want it for the xp more than anything else 
Alright, you are dead. I gotta remember, I've got this. Can I heal anyone else? Or did anyone else even take a hit? I can't even move the orcs. Well, we'll see what the spider does. It'll probably suicide itself on somebody. Yep. Oh well, I got lifesteal on top of everything else. <laughs> Alright, so that paves the way for that builder, so infrastructure-wise I'm good there. I can move on to that, I think, boneyard is going to be my next stop for these guys. Unfortunately, I got to cross some mountains first, so that's going to slow them down a bit, but that's still by far the quickest way out there. I think I'll probably just go for those haste berries. Can I get that two turns? That's three turns? Man. Yeah, one, two, and then three. Uh, maybe it'd be quicker to go through here. Doesn't seem like it. Well, we'll figure that out uh, in the next episode, actually, I think. I'm going to need to wrap this one up pretty soon. Um, how quickly can that upgrade? That's 120 gold, two turns. I mean, I may as well, since I'm making a city out of this, I may as well get the stone wall in there. You guys will have to let me know, will the stone wall... You know what, this city probably doesn't need the stone wall. I'm not going to gain anything by its borders expanding. I don't know that I'm going to do much with this city at all, to be honest. I think I might just be throwing away gold. Oh, no, not raise, not raise. Hang on, how do I cancel that? Uh, how, how do I cancel that? I don't think I can. Well, I'm stuck with it now. I was going to say, I don't know if that city really needs it, though. I mean, it's kind of in the back. It's not going to gain anything by expanding its borders, but... Oh, well, I've spent the money now. Uh, oh yeah, he's my second backup for my capital. And at least a couple priests hanging out pretty much everywhere. This is my center underground scout. Uh, I think he should probably go straight east now. I think that's a general pattern I should be following. Um, builder... Oh yeah, I was going to have him circle around and dig around back in here. Alright. No, but I don't want him to dig out that wall just yet. Sort of want that to be a natural barrier. I will dig it out later if I want to. This guy needs to get out. There are halflings coming. Probably best to leave them a vassal for now. This is kind of a long way away from my sorcerer army. I think what I'm going to do is have... Oh, there's gold up there. Well, I can go for that and sort of keep an eye on this route here. Probably have him stop there and pray that bone dragons don't come. Because there's another undead camp there. They seem to be kind of all over the place. Alright, that is the end of this turn. Actually, it's not quite the end of this turn. I'm going to go ahead and get this cast. Otherwise, I'm probably going to forget to do it. And once again, I'm pretty much out of mana. I will keep working on that. Also curious... Okay, good. This city's borders are going to expand another turn. That will help a bit with the mana. That'll be 10 more per turn. So... That, that'll that be a nice... That'll be just a nice economic boost in general, getting that Sphinx Temple. Once these martyrs are done, i got to get back to upgrading this city, because I want that crystal tree in the borders, too. Anyway, uh, that's going to be it for this episode, guys. Thanks a bunch for watching. I appreciate it. If there's anything I forgot or need to do before, to end it, before I end this turn, please let me know. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and I will see you all next time.